Good evening. We have just had an important meeting with President Poroshenko uh, on the grave crisis uh, in Ukraine. Russia is now fighting against Ukraine in Ukraine. Russian troops and Russian tanks are attacking the Ukrainian forces. And while talking about peace, Russia has not made one single step to make peace possible. Instead of de-escalating the crisis, Russia has only deepened it. What is happening in Ukraine has serious implications for the security and stability of the whole Euro-Atlantic area. We stand united in our support of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. We strongly condemn Russia's repeated violations of international law. Russia must stop its aggressive actions against Ukraine, withdraw its thousands of troops from Ukraine and the border regions, and stop supporting the separatists in Ukraine. We call on Russia to reverse its illegal and illegitimate self-declared annexation of Crimea, which we do not and will not recognize. This is the first time since the end of, the, of World War II that one European country has tried to grab another's territory by force. Europe must not turn away from the rule of law to the rule of the strongest. This is vital for peace and security in the world. Ukraine has been an important and distinctive NATO partner for many years. We highly value Ukraine's contributions to our operations and the NATO response force. Ukraine has stood by NATO. Now, in these difficult times, NATO stands by Ukraine. Our support is concrete and tangible. We have established a comprehensive and tailored package of measures so that Ukraine can better provide for its own security. We will focus on cyber defense, logistics, and command control and communications. We will also help with rehabilitation for troops injured in the conflict. We will provide advice to help Ukraine with defense reforms. And allies will assist Ukraine with around 15 million euro through NATO. And in addition to that, we have heard several announcements of bilateral assistance financially and in other ways. An independent, sovereign, and stable Ukraine, firmly committed to democracy and the rule of law, is key to Euro-Atlantic security. That is NATO's goal, and I know that that is your goal too, Mr. President. Thank you very much indeed, dear Secretary General, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really glad to let you know that we had opened a very substantial discussion on NATO-Ukraine Commission Summit today. I never feel such a strong, enormous support, but all the leaders of the countries, head of the government, and the representative of the people of the NATO member states, as it was demonstrated today for Ukraine. It is definitely a landmark event at the highest level during the 20-year history of the partnership between Ukraine and NATO. This partnership has always been an essential factor for the international and regional security and stability. The security and stability which are brutally undermined by Russian aggression and every single head of state and head of the government stress the importance of unity and solidarity in Ukraine, with Ukraine. 
the NATO should demonstrate today. From the very beginning of his hostility, Alliance has been standing by Ukraine, supporting it politically and practically to the maximum extent possible. This stance was reaffirmed today by the head of states and government of NATO member states today. This highly valued. And we are also grateful to NATO and individual allies for the practical help and assistance provided to Ukraine in the recent months. Humanitarian assistance of the civilian population affected by the armed conflict, advisory support, which is already work for Ukraine, medical treatment of the injured Ukrainian servicemen, etc. At the meeting, many allies declared additional practical support to Ukraine to be provided on the bilateral basis, including commitments to contribute newly established defense capacity building trust funds, and also, which is very important, to rehabilitate the injured Ukrainian servicemen, bilateral military technical cooperation on non-lethal and lethal items. Friend in need is a friend indeed. And that was a very strong demonstration of the solidarity with Ukraine. Completely new security situation created by this aggression calls for our joint action to counter the emerging security challenges, including the hybrid warfare threats, and thus shape a new strategic framework of the NATO-Ukraine cooperation. We held a frank exchange of views on current and future NATO-Ukraine relations in this new security environment. We agreed that our further cooperation will be focused on the achieving full interoperability between Ukraine and NATO and developing joint capabilities in military, defense, and security sector. We will strengthen our intensive cooperation with NATO in defense and security sector through the development and capacity building programs focusing on reform of Ukrainian armed forces and other security structures and elements. The second important element of the new NATO-Ukraine cooperation strategic framework is Ukraine participation in partnership interoperability initiative. This will allow us to maintain a high level of the interoperability between Ukraine and NATO forces achieved through the continuous participation of our national contingent in the NATO-led mission and operating joint military exercises NATO response force. Last but not least, element of our new framework, further deepening of NATO-Ukraine distinctive partnership. We consider this partnership to be an integral part of Ukraine-European integration course. The main commitment with the implementing of wide-ranging EU integration-related reform, Ukraine will further pursue the goal of the through annual national program for NATO-Ukraine cooperation, along with other existing tools and mechanisms. Such an approach will create necessary synergy between Ukraine-European integration and Euro-Atlantic cooperation task. Thank you very much for your attention.